All right, let's take a look at Project File Management in Document Locator. Document Locator, as you can see here, is built right into Windows. So as you're navigating through it, it's going to have a very familiar folder and file structure. However, unlike Windows, we're adding a lot of security and automation to these folders. So for example, every time you build out a new folder, it's going to build out the folder structure for you. And when you get down to the file level, files are all stored in their native format, and they're all named appropriately with the naming convention of your choice and tagged with metadata. And this metadata is configurable. You get to decide what information you want to use to categorize your document. And if I come over here to the preview pane, I can actually see a summary of that metadata. And metadata is not only going to be helping with search results. It's going to be what drives these naming conventions. You can put dates on documents to trigger reminders and notifications. And you can even use it to trigger workflows. So for example, we know that if this goes through an approval step, it absolutely needs to be seen by the project manager as at least part of that approval. When you go to build out a new project, I did mention that you can make sure that you're building out the new folder structure instead of having to do that all manually. You can do that at a right click at Create New Folder Structure. And the system is going to go, what kind of folder structure are you building? This is for projects. Tell me the client name. This is for Erevan. Tell me the project name. This is going to be for Statikoi battery storage. And mind you, I'm typing this all in by hand, but if you're working with a project management solution, you can have all of this information automatically imported from there for you. So when I hit OK, this is going to build out that folder structure. It's not going to rebuild a second Erevan because we've already got that here. But now I've got that second um, project set of folders right here for us to start working with. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it means to bring files into the system and manage them once they're here. You can go ahead and do that in a couple of ways. In a little bit, we're going to explore bringing files and emails in automatically from Outlook. You can also scan files in, have watch folders. But the easiest thing to do is just to drag and drop. And Document Locator is going to say, all right, you're bringing this into Ventura County's drawings folder. So I already know the project it belongs to, and I already know the project manager it belongs to. But tell me a little bit more about this file. So I can go ahead and say, this is a structural file. Specifically, it's a detail. We'll put today's date on it. I'm starting it at rev, starting it at rev level A. Uh, if I want to, I can go ahead and specify the size of this document and its status. You can add more information in the description field. So this is illustrating several concepts. And you can add notes that are specific to this version. So draft, please have ready for review by end of day today. When I hit OK, this is going to import the file into the system. It's going to tag it with all of this metadata, and it's going to name it appropriately according to our naming convention, which in this case is the project number, document type, and document date. And it's also going to full text index it. So when we go to search for this later, we're not only going to be able to search by the metadata, but we're also going to be able to search by the content. So why don't we at this point go ahead and, and look at what it means to manage these files when they're going through updates. You can go ahead and check a document out whenever you want to make a change to it. And that is going to go ahead and put a red check mark next to that file. And it's also going to show anybody who navigates to that document that you're the person who's working on it. So if I scroll over a little bit farther, you can see who has that file. Once it's opened, you can go ahead and start making whatever changes are appropriate. So I can go ahead and put a cloud around this. I can go ahead and leave comments. Um, if you're going to go ahead and use stamps, because they're things that are relevant to what you're doing all the time, you can go ahead and drag those in. And once I'm done working on the file, I can go ahead and close it. And now that I'm back in Document Locator, I can go ahead and I can check that document back in. Now you're going to notice when the file is checked back in, I have the opportunity to update any of these values or add to my version note. Ready for approval. Hit OK. That's going to release the file back into the system. And you're going to notice it's going to update this version number from 1 to 2. 
you'll notice it didn't update the rev level. The difference between the version number and the rev number or level, in this case, since these are all alphabetical, is the version is updated every single time somebody checks out a document to make a change. However, that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with where it is in its life cycle. So it probably needs to go through something like an approval process before it's ready to, to rev up to level B. If you'd like to see previous versions, you can go ahead and access those at a right click in version history. Here it's going to show you every time somebody works on that file. It's going to date and timestamp when that change is made. It's going to show you who made the change. You can go ahead and see uh, any notes that somebody left on that version of a document. If you like, you can go ahead and you can select two versions of a document and show differences using a comparison tool of your choice. Uh, we deliberately allow you to use whatever comparison tool is most relevant for your team, uh, depending on the kind of construction or engineering you're doing, or maybe it's somebody on your legal team looking at contracts. You might have really different needs when it comes to comparison tools, so you get to work with the one that's the best fit for you. You can also, if need be, roll back to a previous version by selecting that and promoting, promoting it to become the latest. So, all of this versioning is going to be making sure that you have a complete document history without having to manually log updates and changes. You're never going to be confused about how a document got into the state that it's in. You're just going to have complete visibility. Whoops, did not mean to close that window. Let's navigate back to where we were. The next thing that I wanted to show you was workflow. So let's go ahead and work with that document that we were just at, which was the details drawing from today. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to put that into a workflow. And depending on your role on the team, you might have access to any number of workflows. I imagine a great many of you who are project managers will be happy to see this AP invoicing, uh, AP invoice processing workflow. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and use this quick approval workflow. I'm going to keep this workflow fairly streamlined. I don't want you to watch me pretend to take on and take off half a dozen different hats as I pretend to take it from person to person. You'll see that it puts a yellow gear icon on the document, indicating to everybody who navigates to it that it's currently going through a workflow process. And if I scroll a little bit past the metadata, you can actually see the details of this workflow, what it is, when it was started, and by who. So in just a second, I'm going to be receiving an email notification that there is a new document that I need to take a look at. So let's go ahead and see if that's arrived. And this workflow notification is HTML. So it can be your logo, your colors. Ultimately, it's going to have the instructions and a link to the workflow dialog, which is where all of the action happens. So I'm going to delete that so we don't trip over it later. Here in the workflow dialog, this is where you can check a document out and start making changes to it. Um, if it's a document that's going through multiple hands, it's going to aggregate those edits and comments as it goes from person to person. We also have the ability, if your documents need to be signed, to be able to connect with uh, Adobe Sign or DocuSign. Uh, you can use Adobe's built-in signature tool, or you can go ahead and connect with something else like Hello. So there's a lot of options when it comes to signatures and approval. If somebody's out on vacation and you have the authority, you can come over to the Manager Overrides tab and either take ownership of this to keep it moving or cancel it, depending on what's most appropriate. We've already worked with this file, so I'm just going to hit Approve. Looks great. We worked very hard on that. And hit OK. So this workflow is coming to its conclusion. Um, while we're waiting for that to happen, when it comes to workflow, you've got a lot of flexibility. You can go ahead and send documents out to one or several people. And if you're sending it out to a group of people, you can say, OK, team, I've sent it to three of you. I don't care who gets to it first, as long as it's done by Friday by all of you. Or you can go ahead and send it to people sequentially. You can say first person one, then person two, then person three. And if at any point somebody goes ahead and declines it, route it back to the author for, for implementing those changes before you resend it to all three people. So you've got a lot of flexibility in that respect. That workflow notification has actually gone ahead and let me know that somebody has approved it. Uh, so you can go ahead and make sure everybody on the team is involved. And while we're here working in email, another thing that I want to show you is that when somebody sends you an email that's relevant to your project, 
you can go ahead and you can have that automatically imported into the system using document locator rules in Outlook. So I'm going to go ahead and send this. And in just a minute, that's going to arrive. And when it comes to importing files into Document Locator uh, from email, you can go ahead and you can have those files imported. Um, you can import just the email. You can import just an attachment. You can import both. There's a lot of flexibility in that respect. So you've got options uh, when it comes to getting those files into the system. So that's arrived here in my inbox. And we're going to give Document Locator just a second to catch up and import this file into the solution. You've got the same flexibility with Document Locator rules that you have with Outlook rules. So if you're familiar with those, that's how we can automatically get these files and their attachments into the system. So that's arrived, and that is real time about what it takes to get a file from your inbox into Document Locator. Now, we've looked at workflow, and we've looked at version control. I also want to go ahead and show you how you can find documents once they're in the system, um, because that's pretty critical. Most people, when they go to look for a file in Document Locator, they're going to go ahead and use this quick search bar. And unlike Windows, where you're only looking at file names and extensions, in Document Locator, we're going to be looking for a lot of other values as well, including all of those metadata values and the content of the files, as well as a few other areas. So I can come in here and I can say, you know what, I want to see every document in the system that has anything to do with details. This is going to show all of our detail drawings, but also anything else that's relevant, including emails um, or contracts, because that's a word appearing in those files. And I can narrow it down. I can say, you know what, I only want to see stuff related to Project uh, 2610, because that's where we've been today. And then I can say, okay, there's three of these. Specifically, I want the one that had to do with um, the Student Business Center. So I can narrow down to the only file in the system that meets all of these criteria. And we've been working in Bluebeam this whole time, but the integration that we have with Adobe means that if you're using Adobe, when you go to open this file, it can highlight inside of that document all of the terms that you searched for, and it's going to highlight those for you automatically. Um, so that's very handy when you've got multiple pages worth of documents or files that have markups you can save yourself several steps by just going straight to what's been highlighted, which is what you were looking for. That's our quick search. You can also, at a right click, go ahead and say, um, what have I worked on in the last month? Shorter list, what are the last 30 documents I've worked with? What files do I have currently checked out that I'm making edits to? And if you don't want to go through your inbox, I'm, I'm familiar with the fact that a lot of people have very busy inboxes to look for your workflow tasks, you can go ahead and click here to see the list of your outstanding tasks. Um, as you can see, I have several invoices that I really need to get to. Um, so this is another way to see what's on your plate and to have visibility. We also have saved searches. And this is where you're working with collections of documents that all have something in common, but they might live in different places, or you might want the information presented in a specific way. So if I wanted to see all of our active files that belong with Project Manager Marcus Dixon, I can go ahead and run this, see what those files are, sort them by category or document type or document date. So you've got a lot of opportunity, again, to stay on top of what files belong to who, when their due dates are, and what the next steps are for them. The system also has reports built in. So you can go ahead and build out custom reports. The system has a handful just built in tracking things like your system metrics. The user activity report is going to go ahead and be an audit trail for every user in the system. And then some of the reports that can be very helpful, you can go ahead and say, say there's a document that you need to go ahead and send out to a number of people. And as a manager or a document controller, you want to know that they've seen it or if they haven't. You can run a workflow. And here in the back, we're going to have a list of what files have been sent out and whether or not somebody has seen them yet. So you can sort by any of these fields. And you can go ahead and have visibility into when the documents were released who's not getting to things where your bottlenecks are, and also what things are getting through and how quickly they're getting through. We also have um, a transmittal 
history report. So if you folks are sending out transmittals and you want to be able to keep track of that, you can do that here. So I'm going to stretch out that date field a little bit. This is where you can see what's been sent out, who it's being signed by. You can sort by any of these fields. So you can go ahead and see how was this document? What is it a, an approval as installed, review, et cetera. And then the final report that I wanted to make sure I showed you is this project detail report. Oh, nope, I wanted to show you the project chart report. That's more fun. Here we go. Here in the project chart report, you can see um, how many of these files, what stage each of them are at in the project. And you can drill down and you can go ahead and say, what files are these? What uh, clients do they belong to? What projects do they belong to? Again, you can go ahead and sort by these, so you can go ahead and see who's working on what. So with reporting, we want to make sure that you can see entirely everything about a file. We never want there to be questions about how a document got into the state that it's in. Uh, we want you to have all of this information at your fingertips in version history, in searching, in reporting, so that you have all of that information immediately available without you necessarily having to type it into an Excel spreadsheet or go spelunking through your Outlook. You're just going to have all of that available right here. The last thing that I wanted to make sure that I showed you is this entire time we've been in the system uh, in the desktop and I've been an administrator or a manager. So I've been able to go anywhere and do and see anything. So the last thing that I want to touch on is our web interface. And that's also a really good time to also touch on security. Anytime somebody comes in, the v in via the web, they're either going to be logging in with a username and password, or we can go ahead and look at single sign-on. And this time, I'm going to go ahead and sign in as limited user. And you're going to notice right off the bat that the web interface is meant to look very much like the desktop interface. We want the same ease of use in terms of being able to navigate. And once I come through here, I've got that same set of folder structures available. And you can go ahead and restrict what folders people are allowed to work with, or even specifically what documents they're allowed to see. Once somebody gets down to the file level, they can go ahead and they can preview documents, or they can go ahead and download them, check them out and make edits, start or participate in a workflow, look at version history, as long as they've got the security right. For example, if I come over here to policies and procedures, I'm not allowed to write new ones. I can only see what's been created. And if I go to edit one of these, the system will go, nope, sorry, you don't have sufficient privileges to do that. Um, you could even make it so that people can't see that files exist at all. So you've got a lot of different ways for, for people to access documents that are appropriate for them to have access to. Um, we're going to go ahead and keep track of that version history. You can send files outside of the system as attachments or as links to people who can get into the system. You can even select multiple documents and send them outside of the system as a combined PDF. And behind the scenes, all of this is going to be tracked. So you're never confused about what happened to a file, how it got into the state that it's in, or who's been working on it. All of that's available right at your fingertips. Okay, that's a look at project file management in Document Locator. If you would like more information, please reach out to us at documentlocator.com.